Pleased to say joining us right now in studio is David Hunt. He is the CEO over at PGM. Uh, thanks for being here, uh, David. Oh, thanks for having me back. Uh, this has been a year in 2023 that I think defied a lot of expectations. I'm sure you remember we came into this year expecting a recession. We came into this year expecting a lot of pain in equity markets, and we kind of got the exact opposite. And the big question everyone wants to know is, whatever led to that this year, to the upside, <laughs> is that going to continue into 2024? And if so, why? No, it's a, it's a great point. And I yeah. think uh, uh, all, all, all people in the prediction business were led to a lot of humility, I think, over the, mm -hmm. over the last year. Um, and, and so I think that uh, the most important thing for long-term investors is to focus on what's really changed in the regime. And for us, we believe that over the next few years, we will have somewhat higher inflation mm -hmm. and somewhat higher rates than we've had kind of in the previous decade. And I think that that's really important because we had a decade before the pandemic when savers were effectively penalized around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and it led to this enormous hunt for yield and it pushed a lot of assets into much riskier things probably than they had business being. Mm -hmm. My real hope is that we are now returning to what I think is going to be a healthier balance mm -hmm. between savers and investors. Mm -hmm. Actually, retirees and pension funds will do better. Mm -hmm. And in that higher for longer uh, view, you are going to see a big rotation um, into credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we can already see that beginning uh, to play out in the institutional market. We're starting to see some signs of it in the retail market. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a big theme for next year. That rotation into credit. What does it come at the expense of? So um, in the initial days, a lot of people actually used their uh, public bond portfolio for liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the money that came out of that, because there was a lot of pain, obviously, as interest rates rose fast, mm -hmm. went into money market funds. And that's where it's been for the majority of this year. So what we're seeing now is money is coming out uh, of money market. And we expect that to be at a much higher level next year. Mm -hmm. um, people are going to draw down on that excess savings, and, and institutions are going to draw down on the liquidity they've had, and they're going to be putting that money to work in the public fixed income markets in levels that we haven't seen in a number of years. And of course, uh, watching just money pile into money market funds while we're at $5.9 <laughs> trillion right now, yes. it's really one of the more stunning stories it is. of 2023. But let's talk a little bit about that rotation back into credit. You mentioned the public fixed income markets. What about the private credit markets and private markets in general? Well, I'm really glad you, you, you raised that because obviously private credit is a really, really important part of certainly our business. I mean, our private alternatives businesses are one of the largest in the world, and we have about three hundred billion that we invest in that and private credit has been our probably our fastest growing uh, business hmm. and the reason for that uh, is not only the rate environment but it's also been that the banks have continued to really be very difficult lenders into this into this market they following the GFC's had a, have a, had a lot of capital restrictions put on and people are expecting those restrictions to get even more punitive over the next year and so we are seeing that that many Many, many middle market companies are looking for private credit opportunities, and many investors would like to have that in part of their portfolio. And so I think we're uh, kind of only halfway through the real development of a big shift of much more investment by institutional investors into private credit writ large across all sorts of strategies. And it's really interesting to hear that that's your fastest growing business. The question I keep coming back to around conversations around private credit, the growth has been fantastic, but you think about from the investor standpoint, you can get pretty good returns in the public market right now. You think about the high yields in the public fixed income markets, you have a lot more transparency as well. What necessarily is the pitch for private credit over public credit? Well, as I said, I think the big rotation for the next year is going to be actually into public fixed income. Um, as one of the largest uh, you know, fixed income managers in the world, we really see that across our, our strategies. And when you can be paid well, and people are now comfortable taking some of risk, I think you're going to see that uh, rotate very clearly in. In private credit, what you're getting is, at least in our model, you're getting a directly originated product. So we're out calling on middle market companies. We know the companies. Um, and we're able to get covenants and other forms of protection that mean that we earn a, a little bit of a higher return than the public markets. And when things go south, as they inevitably will, we actually have excellent protections for our investors. So our total return over the cycle will clearly be higher. All right. Well, this could be a, a big uh, structure 
actual change uh, in uh, how people invest uh, going forward. I am curious uh, about, I think, what I think is probably another big structural change going on, and that's actually in Japan and going on with its economy, with its fiscal policy, and with its monetary policy. And investors really seem to be trying to front run this right now. You know, it's a, it's a great point, Romain. I think, I think mm-hmm. the, one of the, the bright spots around economically has been the story of, uh, of Japan. Um, I wish I could tell you that they have kind of fully uh, implemented a lot of the governance reforms that many institutional investors have been pressing them for, but they have made good progress. Mm -hmm. The economy itself is in better shape, and they are starting to see some movement on prices, which is, you know, for many years they were not able to do. So I do think the story in Japan is more positive than we've we've seen, and uh, at least for for us, and we have a big business there, um, that's been extremely good news for, uh, for our investors. Is the sense here that the decisions that the government is going to have to make and the, monet- and the monetary policy makers have to make, is that going to draw more people off the sidelines, meaning more foreign investment coming in? Or the other fear that a lot of people have had is that the domestic investors there will actually pull back, retrench from places like the U.S. and elsewhere? No, I, th- I think you will yeah. see more capital yeah. going into Japan, yeah. a- absolutely. I mean, one of the interesting things that's happening, and I was just there uh, two weeks ago, is that you can feel this pivot uh, globally away from China mm. and toward you know Korea, Japan, Australia. And you can feel that from a security perspective. You feel that when you talk to a lot of the diplomats. And you feel it from an investor perspective. I want to go back to the U.S. I want to talk about one of the other big stories of this year, which of course has been uh, commercial real estate, especially Mm. coming out of the banking crisis that we saw in March. You said in June that uh, you see 60% of the office real estate market in purgatory, that you're going to see a big workout over the next 24 months. Where are we in that timeline? I mean, regrettably, we're still in the rather early days of that. Um, I I would still hold to my, my sentiment that a lot of office buildings that were built more than 10 years ago are really not fit for purpose. And if they don't have great locations, I think they're going to have a bit of a hard time. But I would also emphasize that, you know, real estate is not the same as office. There are many other spaces within real estate that are actually doing pretty well. Uh, for us, multifamily has held up better than we would have hoped and has actually been doing well. Specialty real estate, by which I mean senior housing, data center funds, um, infrastructure, has actually all done really well through this. So I don't want everything to be painted with the same brush as we do in office, which has a long way to work its way itself out. A long way to work itself out. Well, let's talk a little bit more about real estate. Uh, bringing it back to the banking conversation, uh, banks obviously had a lot tied up in commercial real estate. Have we seen them draw out of the real estate market more broadly, and has that created opportunities for you? It it, it has. So there's no question that the pressure they've had on capital, as well as the fact that they've had to take some reserves against uh, their their holdings, has meant that there's much less money that they're willing to put out into new projects and new developments. And so private capital has really stepped into that, and we're one of the largest private real estate debt uh, providers in in, in the U.S. and increasingly in Europe. And I I think that we are absolutely, uh, provided we adhere to our underwriting standards and we keep leverage at a reasonable level, we like the risks that we can take in there. All right. Well, that's a good place to end it, David. It's really great to see you, especially on set. That is Pete Jim CEO, David Hunt.